Good morning. I call to order the April 7th, 2020 meeting of the Saline County Board of Commissioners. And before I ask the uh, clerk to call the roll, I wish to give the instructions to those who might be listening or wish to participate in today's meetings. And you would need to dial 785-621-0800 and enter the participant code 782956 followed by, followed by the pound sign. If you wish to speak during the public forum portion of the meeting, uh, you must dial star nine and the moderator will uh, chime you in. So at this time, I would ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Commissioner Shadwick? Here. Commissioner Sparks? Here. Commissioner Vidrickson? Here. Commissioner Weiss? Here. Commissioner White? Here. I ask the uh, please stand and join me in a flag salute followed by a moment of silence. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, nation, indivisible, under God, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll now move to the uh, citizens in input where uh, citizens may speak on county government, usually limited to uh, three minutes. Are there any callers who wish to uh, state something in today's meeting? Mr. Chairman, no one has raised their hand. We have no callers for the citizen input. Uh, we'll now move to the consent agenda uh, portion of our meeting, which, which includes uh, approval of prior minutes, approval of tax roll adjustments, uh, approval of counts payable and payroll, and approval of the public forum. Is there any commissioner who wishes to pull something from the today's consent agenda? Hearing no objections, we will uh, approve the today's consent agenda. We'll now move to the uh, Action items, uh, item number one, which is a COVID-19 update uh, from Jason Tiller, our health department director. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I'm gonna start with just some updates on stats first. Uh, in the U.S., we currently have 368,533 cases uh, with 11,008 deaths. In Kansas, we have 845 cases with 25 deaths, and in Saline County, seven cases with one death. Uh, KDHE updates these statistics for the state every day around 11, 1130. Um, the state of Connecticut has been added to the list of states that will automatically trigger a 14-day quarantine. Um, that list is available. Um, uh, on our website and on KDHEs, it's Connecticut, Louisiana, Colorado, Illinois, New Jersey, California, Florida, New York, and Washington State um, all require 14-day quarantines if you've traveled there recently. Um, we continue to work with businesses to understand where they fall uh, within the Kansas Essential Function Framework um, about who should be open and, and what they need to do or not do or should they be providing service. Um, this seems to be kind of an evolving target based off of the feedback we get from the governor's office each day. Um, and so that has been a, a challenge in some ways of, of always of understanding everything that they are uh, allowing or not allowing because they have the final decision on whether somebody, um, whether their business is considered essential under that framework. Uh, right now, we're still tracking the peak in Kansas uh, to be in the latter half of April, late April. Um, as they get more data, they will continue to kind of uh, look at that. Um, and I just want to reinforce that, you know, uh, some of our cases, we don't have um, an idea of where they contacted it. Um, you know, they don't have any known travel. So, I mean, there's, there's evidence to say community spread here, so people need to assume that um, people that they're coming in contact with have it and then take those precautions. And most importantly, stay at home. Um, and that will help shorten this thing out. And then the last thing I wanted to say that's slightly off topic, but happy National Public Health Week as well. 
Thank you. And I too would like to reiterate uh, uh, social distancing is, is extremely important. Uh, it, it does seem there are still quite a few people in Saline County who are moving around on a daily basis and uh, we're asking you please, 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 uh, unless it's an essential travel, stay at home and practice the social distancing. So are there any other comments from commissioners? This is Commissioner Shadwick and I have a question that's been posed to me by somebody else. Um, uh, a retail store that's not an ins es essential business, can they still do curbside pickup sales? So what was the type of business? A retail business. Well, it depends on the type of retail business. So what we have been um, advising businesses, because there hasn't been any clear guidance on um, curbside for like retail businesses, it's recommended for like restaurants, uh, grocery stores, you know, to pick and pull and things like that. Um, so what we have been telling people is that unless their business um, is blatantly falls into one of those, those KEF categories, the Kansas Essential Function Framework categories, that uh, to go on the governor's website and apply for the exemption um, so that way we know for sure if they can do that or not. We've asked about the, uh, the curbside for some of these types of just regular retail stores, and we still don't have an answer back on that yet. Thank you. Any further comments from commissioners? If not, uh, thank you, Jason. And uh, we, we certainly appreciate your hard work and your dedication. And uh, please give our heartfelt thanks to your staff and everyone who's working every day uh, pretty diligently at the uh, Saline County Health Department. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We'll move to item number two, resolution 20-2293, Saline County burn restrictions with Michelle Barkley from the uh, Saline County Emergency Management Director. Michelle, good morning. Good morning. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So I am here today. Emergency management is proposing a burn restriction due to COVID-19 following the guidance of the Kansas Department of Health and Environment as well as the Kansas Department of Agriculture. Several Kansas counties in Kansas have actually already taken and implemented some sort of burn ban or burn restriction such as Oakwood County, which is in the North Central region. Um, here in Saline County, we understand that burning is pivotal to the agricultural <coughs> community, which is why we're just imposing a restriction and not a ban. This restriction would include only allowing agricultural permit holders, your AG permit holders, to burn pasture, hay, CRP, and crop residue such as stubble. And then we'll put a 360-acre restriction per permit per day. Um, permit holders with the Saline County permit, the SA permit, will not be able to administer any controlled burns for the duration of the burn restriction. We're just trying to limit the amount of smoke in the air. So we understand that we can't eliminate burning completely, but we're still trying to do what we can to reduce the smoke in the atmosphere um, by allowing some of those unnecessary burning. Um, I do understand that this is a significant inconvenience However, during the state of emergency, um, we're all being asked to make sacrifices. So um, this is to protect ourselves, our loved ones, and our community. And I think it's important to maybe note it. I don't know that it, this would uh, last through April the 30th of 2020. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And we're talking, uh, so someone who lives in the county who has a burn permit and wishes to just uh, burn a, a pile of trash or tree limbs or whatever, that is what we're banning. Your agriculturally related pasture burning is not going to be affected other than there will be a 360 acre restriction. Am I correct in stating those things? Correct. Okay. Is there uh, any comments or questions from commissioners? Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. Okay, uh, yeah, I think you doubled up there, guys. Uh, uh, speak again. Who? It, and by the way, identify yourself when you when you do uh, speak. Is there comments from commissioners? Yes. Commissioner Reed here, Michelle. One quick question: So, uh, people who use a burn barrel to discard their trash, they will not be allowed to uh, use a burn barrel. Is that correct? Correct. We're asking them to just hold off on it for a few weeks 
three at most, and then if it's really necessary, they can always take their stuff to the landfill. Okay, uh, further comment? Did you have one, uh, Commissioner Sparks? Well, and that's basically my same question is, is that uh, it's followed that same question, but it, it's hard for me to believe that we allow somebody to burn 360 acres of grass per day, but we won't allow somebody to burn their trash if they live in the county that they can't burn their trash once a week. That's Correct. Hard for, me, hard for me to even imagine. And that number was come up with after speaking with the rural fire chief um, and some of the members from the agricultural community. I tried to limit the number of acreage, but uh, 360 acres is half of a section, and they said it would be easier to identify where half a section is than to estimate what 200 acres looks like and then stopping that. Oh, I understand that, but what I, my, my question is is that we allow that, somebody to burn 360 acres per day, but somebody that lives in the county that is is older, retired, and let's back and say that they've been burning their trash for 40 years, that you can't burn your trash in a barrel that you've been doing all these years one, once a week or something like that. Correct. And it's because the um, burning of pasture is needs to be done by April 15th to meet the Department of Agricultural's guidance. Okay. That's why I'm permitted to add. And as of right now, I can say that a majority of farmers have already met that need to burning pasture, so there shouldn't be many pastures being burned to that extent of 360 acres. Okay. Is there any? Uh, commission, Commissioner Weeks here one more time. Uh, Michelle, this, uh, did you just say that uh, agriculture burns must be completed by April 15th? Uh, for the CRP guidance. That, that just involves CRP ground and that in there. Correct. And then um, there was a talk of an extension being pushed out to um, the agricultural community if it was something that um, is still being deliberate, deliberated, but I feel that um, they're going to be a little bit lenient on it because they are also advising that we do not burn. Uh, yeah, that is so confusing to me, what you just said. Uh, so they have to complete the burning by April 15th, but this resolution goes until April 30th. Correct. And to touch on, to touch on Commissioner uh, Clark's remark, that the amount of, the amount of uh, smoke coming off of a, a burn barrel it's very, very, very minuscule compared to that of 350 acres of CRP grass burning. And so that's just because we're not trying to affect the agricultural supply chain. We understand that farmers are essential and that we still need to treat the land for new crops to be made. So when you burn your trash, it's, there's no real outcome that you're providing. It's a small sacrifice, but we're trying to no. Well, I understand that, but it seems like a very token, uh, token effort there as far as that goes. Well, this is Commissioner Vidrickson, and I'll weigh in on that a little bit. Uh, I, I think it goes in line with some other things that, uh, regarding the COVID. Any little thing that can be done to help alleviate the issue is, is helpful. Uh, I mean, if we just disregard every every facet of every movement. Uh, uh, then we've got a, a major issue, but I think if it, we're talking to three weeks here So I mean if, if someone can't hold off on their trash burning for for just a couple three weeks um, They're creating a lot of trash <clears throat> Further comments This is Commissioner White and Michelle. I was trying to figure out the significance on 360 acres mm -hmm. I didn't know if that was arbitrary number or anything, but for clarification purposes a half section is 320, not 360. So that's what 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 is the difference? I was advised by rural fire chief that it would be easier if we just put 360. Okay. <laughs> if we would like to modify the number, we can. I was just trying to be as considerate with 
the agricultural community and the farmers and the fire chiefs on what they best advise because I am definitely not a um, seasoned professional when it comes to uh, farming, so I relied on the guidance of those that do every day. Okay, and I'm sure not going to go against the wishes of a rural fire chief. So no, no, no further questions. All right, uh, is there any public comment regarding this uh, resolution? Mr. Chair, no one has raised their hand. And we have no one who has called in, uh, so I would take a motion on this uh, resolution. This is Commissioner Shadwick, and Mr. Chairman, I move we adopt resolution 20-2293 as presented. Commissioner Spark, second the motion. Uh, it has been moved and seconded that we approve uh, Resolution 20-2293, Saline County Burn Restrictions. Further comments? All of those in favor of the motion, please I'll do a roll call vote first of all. Uh, Commissioner White? Yay. Commissioner Weiss? Aye. Commissioner Sparks? Nay. Commissioner Shadwick? Aye. And Commissioner Vidrickson is aye. That is motion passes four to one. We will move to item number three, uh, RFA 151-20 bid award for hot mix asphalt construction with uh, Saline County engineer Justin Mater. Uh, good morning, Jess Justin. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, this request for action is to discuss and take appropriate action on a Saline County road and bridge request to award the bid for hot mix asphalt pavement profile milling, and aggregate shoulder construction. Sealed bids were open on March 26th at 11 a.m. One bid was received from APAC Kansas. And you should have a, um, a 11 by 17 sheet of the bid tab. And I just wanted to, to uh, make the point of saying that it's pretty difficult to have only one bidder for this uh, type of construction. All asphalt and shoulder work must be completed by December 1st of 2020. Um, however, there will be no work allowed during week first. Uh, you should also have a um, 11 by 17 sheet of uh, the project map and all of the project locations are uh, denoted in red. So the alternatives for action is uh, number one, uh, step bid as indicated in staff recommendations, or option two would be deck the bid. Staff recommends to accept a bid from APAC Kansas for the amount of estimated work to equal $1,273,625.85. The funds for this budget will be taken from the contractual asphalt work uh, budget line item. This account has a current unencumbered balance of $1,926,970. Other contractual work taken from this account include the chip seal and crack seal contract. Um, also, just to let you know that um, one one location uh, that was in our program this year is Centennial Road, uh, about a half mile north of Waterwell. This project is a uh, joint project with the city of Salina, and last night the uh, City Council decided to move forward with this project if Saline County moves forward with the project. So they're, they're still all in that project. Uh, Justin, uh, your, your uh, 11 by 17s didn't get put in our packet, evidently. I do have a map. And it, it really, the only significant location that it shows is uh, from Niles Road to east to the uh, Dickinson County line. Is that correct? Is that the only significant one? Yeah, that's, that's by far the, the biggest project, yes. And that will complete um, about a three-year program, or three years of a project uh, that we've been working for on old 40 from Carolina to Solomon. I'm guessing that uh, the, the 1117 uh, is in our packet. It's just that it's on an 8 by 11. Or, uh, oh, okay. I, so, I yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, I, I happen to uh, know that uh, there are cones... Uh, on the uh, old 40 on the eastern portion, or the western portion of that from New Cambria uh, West. Is there something getting ready to happen there also? Yes, I was, I was gonna mention that um, APAC contacted me here um, last week in May 
um, they were asking if they can move forward with uh, last year's delayed project. So there was a project, uh, you know, from Simpson to Niles on Old Forty uh, that they didn't get completed last year. And we took that money and, and rolled it over to the Special Highway Fund. Um, and and they wanted to move forward with that project. And so they're going to start. They're going to start today um, repairing the intersection. The very last thing that they did last year was to do the intersection of Country Club and Simpson. Um, and that intersection just didn't, the asphalt just didn't hold together, just didn't bond to the uh, underlying asphalt very well. And so they're going to mill that out and redo that intersection today. And then tomorrow is they're planning on starting on old 40. Okay. Am I, uh, I, I talked I talked with APAC yesterday about their schedule um, for the 2020 program. Um, if the commissioners would award their bid, um, and if the commissioners were okay with proceeding, they would like to continue. Um, with the 2020 project from last year. So in a sense, you know, continue, as soon as they go from Simpson to Niles, immediately start from Niles to Solomon because they're going to be doing that project. They're going to be right there in the area. They don't have to remobilize. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Vidrickson, uh, I apologize to the public and my fellow commissioners for asking that question out of order here because we were actually talking about another topic. But thank you, Justin, for uh, clarifying that for me, and I do apologize. So I'll get us back on task here by uh, going back to the, uh, the RFA that's, that's in front of us. Uh, are there questions uh, from commissioners? Hey, Justin. One, okay, you doubled up again. Uh, sound like Roger? No, go ahead, Jim. Commissioner Week. <laughs> Sorry, Roger. You and I seem to be pretty yep. talkative this morning. Uh, just yep. looking at the map location, uh, three, four, five, <clears> and six. Looks like rather, well, at least three and four. Looks like rather small project. Can you tell me what they entail? Yes. So on, on location three, um, we were informed by, I was informed by the, the maintenance operations that that's a location where it is, um, they have issues with gravel being pulled up onto, the gravel on uh, Muir Road being pulled up onto the asphalt pavement on the Fallen Road. And so that lo location is to um, add asphalt approaches on both sides of the road. Location four, is to do the same thing um, there on the on Summit Road. The asphalt pavement there's a big curve through there, and we have the same issue with gravel being pulled onto the paved road. Um, but that there is it's a big safety issue. We've had several accidents with um, motorcycles as they're trying to traverse that curve. They hit that gravel and then they lose control and and wreck. Um, Location five, there's two asphalt low water crossings down there. And so with the low water crossing, there's, there's no um, drainage pipe under the road. And so the, uh, the area is designed for the water to flow over the road. And so this is a gravel road, so there's an um, a asphalt, um, asphalt pavement in those areas. And there, they've just been... Um, ignored for quite a while and they're getting in pretty bad shape and so um, actually a six is kind of the same situation and so five and six is to overlay the uh, low water crossings and it's the same thing on location seven there's a low water crossing up there where the water's designed to go over the road um, and that is to, to, to do some work on that existing pavement thank you uh -huh. Further questions from commissioners? Commissioner Spark here. Yeah, Justin, thank you. Uh, one of my uh, questions is that uh, I, with your engineering estimates, what is the percentage of what we get for a bid and what that is that we're supposed to uh, not take it? Is it 10%? Oh, yeah, if, if my engineer estimate is more than 10% under the low bid, then by um, statute we we can't accept it. Unless there's we can either we can either rebid it 
or we can adjust the scope of the project uh, work and, and work with the low bidder to try to, to get within that 10 percent. Uh, Commissioner. And that's one of my questions is that on some of these uh, individual bids here that you're quite a bit uh, less than 10 percent. Correct. Um, but if, if you look at the total. Um, yeah, but that's. that's yeah, I, 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 I understand what you're saying and, and the, the statute is not very clear. Um, you know, because also another thing with these projects is that, you know, this these bids are not to establish a total price. Um, you know, these bids are to establish um, unit prices. Okay. Okay. All right. But I just was under the assumption that when something was over uh, under 10% that we had to do something else about it. Right. And, and I think if, if these, this project here, and like most of my projects, um, it states that we are going to award all projects to one contractor, you know, and, and not break it up and say we can award uh, multiple um, or we can award projects to multiple contractors. Then I can see where you can run into an issue with the, the 10%. However, this one is kind of a, an all or nothing um, with with the bid award. And, and again, when I say all or nothing too, that still there's language in our, in the um, bid documents that does allow Saline County to eliminate projects. You know, the total bid is awarded to one contractor, but Saline County is is allowed to to eliminate projects without adjustment of your prices on the other remaining projects. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Vidrickson, uh, you've confused me just a little bit there, Justin, because uh, your estimate is higher than what the bid is. Now, because your estimate is higher, that 10% doesn't take effect, does it? I thought it was only if your estimate was under the bid. If the bids come in over your estimate, that's when the 10% kicked in. Or does it go both directions? No, no, no. It's, it's only when I'm lower. But where Commissioner Sparks was talking about, if you look at the individual project locations, you're right, and I understand that. I understand that. Yeah. Uh, and your your your, your total uh, cost here is about fifty fifty five thousand dollars less than than. Uh, their bid is $55,000 less than your estimate, so it doesn't really apply in this case. Am, am I correct? That, that's correct. You know, and, and I just wanted to point out, too, that um, I, I did these projects a little bit different than what we've done in the past. In the past, uh, you know, all of the, um, the quantities have been, for each, all the projects have been lumped together in, in one um, one quantity line item or one bid item line item. For instance, like asphalt for all projects, all the, the tons are totaled up and then you bid that total tons. Where the, the issue that comes into is, is, especially with this year, when you have small projects, which we have quite a few small projects that I wanted to get them done it all in one year, small projects causes for an increase in the unit price. And so I wanted to be able to see what those project or those unit prices come out to compared to a, a large project like old 40. Um, you know, and so we're going from, um, um, you know, an old 40, we are at $73.50 a time. And there's, there's the one project there where we're $150 a time. And so I think that just helps me moving forward to better estimate um, projects. Well, I'm this is Commissioner Vidrickson, and I'm I'm totally uh, understanding this. I mean, again, the the total estimate of the project is 55 for the total all the projects in, involved, 55 thousand dollars or thereabouts uh, cheaper uh, than what your engineering estimate is. And with that having been said, I'm in favor of uh, okaying the project. Uh, are there any further questions from commissioners? Is there any public comment? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, no one has raised their hand. Uh, no one having called in, I would uh, ask for a motion from commissioners.
Commissioner Shadwick, Mr. Chairman, I move we award the bid to APAC Kansas as presented by staff. Commissioner Spark, I second the motion. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 151-20 bid award for hot mix asphalt construction uh, and awarding the bid to APAC Kansas. Uh, I will make a roll call vote. Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Weiss? Aye. Commissioner Sparks? Aye. Commissioner Shadwick? Aye. Commissioner Vidrickson is aye. Motion does pass 5 to 0. Thank you, Justin. All right, thank you. All right, we'll move to item number four, which is RFA 152-20 UMR Teladoc Amendment with uh, Marilyn Lemer, our Human Resources Director. Good morning, Marilyn. Good morning, Commissioners. This request for action is to add Teladoc services to our Sling County Health Plan effective April 1st to the end of this plan year, which ends September 30th, 2020. It provides an opportunity for covered employers or employees to use the teledoc services for non-emergency care, to talk to a medical provider in lieu of an on-site visit to their physician's office where they are very heavily burdened with COVID effects, um, COVID-19 effects right now. Um, the alternative for action is to approve the added service, deny the added service, or delay any action for further information. Um, we do recommend adding this uh, service for our employees. The impact to our health plan trust fund where the claims and administrative fees are paid from um, is estimated to be uh, about $2,400. It is a fee of $1.25 per employee per month. Um, and then depending on the actual utilization that employees would use, there is a $45 uh, consultation fee per service. Um, and, and, and that, that would be funded, funded by the trust as well. Again, Again this, this is just something that we would like to add as a circuit for our employees uh, so that we can maybe um, lighten the burden um, of the local doctor's offices and medical professionals. Okay. Uh, I'm certainly not going to, Commissioner Vidrickson, by the way, um, not going to go against the uh, guidance from our HR director. Uh, are there other comments from commissioners? Hearing none, is there any uh, public comment? Mr. Chairman, no one has raised their hand. Uh, hearing no public comment, I would ask for a motion from the commission, please. Commissioner Shadwick, Mr. Chairman, I move we approve by signature the added services. Commissioner Spark, I the motion. It has been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 152-20 UMR Teladoc uh, amendment um, and to approve the signature for the added services. Uh, roll call vote would be Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Weiss. Aye. Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Commissioner Shadwick. Aye. Commissioner Vidrickson is aye. Motion does pass five to zero. We will move to uh, item number five, RFA 153-20 RX benefits uh, agreement with, again, with Marilyn Lemer, Human Resources Director, and go ahead, Marilyn. Good morning again. Uh, this request is to sign the administrative services agreement with RX benefits for our pharmacy benefit management. Blaine County did change pharmacy benefit managers at the beginning of our plan year that uh, started October 1st of 19. It is not unique to begin the services and then the final agreement is generated at a later date. And this did come a little bit later uh, than normal, but in this case, the delay did benefit us, uh, which resulted in some better rebates than was initially proposed. Uh, the alternative for action is to sign the agreement, do not sign the agreement or delay for further information, and the recommendation is to sign the administrative services agreement with RX benefits. There is no additional budget impact. The administrative fees were already calculated into our renewal. Further comments from commissioners? Is there any public comment? Mr. Chair, no one has raised their hand. Hearing nothing from the public, I would take a motion uh, from the commission, please. 
Commissioner Shadwick, Mr. Chairman, I move we approve by signature the agreement as presented. Commissioner Spark here. I second the motion. It has been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 153-20 RX benefits agreement uh, by signature for the agreement. Uh, roll call vote will be Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Weiss. Aye. Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Commissioner Shadwick. Aye. And Commissioner Vidrickson is also aye. Motion does pass five to zero. Thank you, Marilyn, for your action. Thank you. We'll move to uh, RFA, or excuse me, item number six, which is RFA 154-20, election for a dedicated sales tax to construct a new jail. And before we, and that will be with Philip uh, Smith Haynes, county administrator. Before we get into that, uh, I, I will alert my fellow commissioners that we do need to take some action today in one, one fashion or another. I will be calling on each one of you individually to give us your particular comments and we will be taking public comment after that. So at this point in time I would uh, turn the uh, floor over to uh, Administrator Haynes, Smith Haynes. Thank you Mr. Thank Chair. You, Mr. Chair. I won't I go won't into the exhaustive history of what we have done to, to uh, prepare for a jail decision, but I will say that there are six alternatives that are before your commission today. Uh, uh, to construct a jail on a new Greenfield site and do that via a special election. To construct on a Greenfield site that merge with the November general election. To construct the two site option, which would involve a Greenfield site as well as remodeling the current jail. To construct an addition on the current site, a no-build no option, which would involve continuing to house Allen County, and of course, and of course the, the option to defer a decision. The recommendation from staff to is to construct on a greenfield site, but to conduct a special election for that purpose. And this, and this is, is the, the recommendation, recommendation that we're planning, we're planning to make based on, on all of the town halls. Town halls. And, and COVID-19 COVID has, has sort of intervened, has sort of intervened a little bit. Little bit. And so the question, yeah, the question may, may be, be whether this whether is this an appropriate is time, time to go forward with a capital with project, a project of this magnitude. magnitude. I'll just I'll read, read uh, uh, briefly, briefly from, from the Government, Government Finance, Finance Officers, Officers Association, Association Financial, Financial First Aid Guide. Guide. Some, Some capital, capital assets, assets are safer, are safer to, defer to, defer to defer than others. Than capital, capital assets, assets, assets provide that provide a new service, have significant ongoing operation and maintenance costs, and don't have a critical public health or safety function might be prime candidates for deferral. It may not be wise to defer assets that replace an existing asset, reduce ongoing costs, and or serve a critical public safety or health function. Uh, the jail does serve a critical public safety function, and the recommended greenfield site option will reduce ongoing costs, and that is the basis for staff's recommendation. I'd be happy to answer questions. All right, at this time, I'm going to call on the individual commissioners, and uh, I'll start with uh, Commissioner Sparks. Good morning. Commissioner Sparks here. My my whole thought is, has been since we first seen the proposals from the architect and the construction company, uh, I, I feel that the, the one and the only, the best option is to go build on a new greenfield site. Uh, for over the for the next 20 years for the total cost operations and uh, utilizing our existing jail I think it's our best option second thought is on uh, delaying it or not delaying it is that I think that we uh, should my thoughts is that we should go ahead and, and uh, look forward to it and uh, and let the county voters decide whether we we move forward or not because I, I it's going to be a tough time 
uh, either we, if we do it now or even if we put it off a year and that cost escalates uh, uh, a five or six percent at that time. So, but anyway, uh, that's my feeling on the situation, and, and I, I want to thank everyone for all their time and efforts in putting all of this together for the last five months or six months or five years. But anyway, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sparks. Uh, Commissioner Shadwick. Um, I, first of all, I have a question. I'm not so sure. Um, how spending $88 million and building a bigger jail and, and having more people to have to staff it reduces ongoing cost. It reduces ongoing operational cost in terms of it is cheaper to add additional staff than it is projected to be to house the projected number of prisoners out of county over that same 20 year period of time. Uh, that does not take into account the cost of construction. So that is an additional cost, but it would be funded from a separate funding source, of course, upon approval by voters. Um, again, I understand uh, that thought, but um, selling that to the public that this is reducing cost, I think, is a little misleading. Um, Mr. Chairman, I think I've been consistent about um, my thoughts over the last two years about not needing a larger jail until we kind of uh, look at other alternatives. Um, that's why I was part of the original Reduce the Jail Population Committee that was started under a previous commission. Um, I believe that um, committee uh, became a build a big jail committee very quickly and we did not look at very many ways to do that. Um, I do, however, believe that the status quo is not acceptable. We have an aging jail and we, and we um, have a facility that's not uh, conducive to the staff. So even with my reservations, um, I do believe that um, this needs to go to a vote. Um, I'm not so sure how it will go, but uh, the, you know, the voters need to be able to um, be heard. And so uh, of all the suggestions. Um, obviously, I'm not a, did not want this big of a jail and don't think it's appropriate. Um, I still think that if we send something to the voters, it needs to be a Greenfield site special election. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Weiss. Well, I, I struggle with this quite a bit. And I guess the one thing that is uh, come to light here recently with, with this uh, COVID-19 is, is the fact that how vulnerable Spring County is with their inmates that they have uh, outside of county and how quickly uh, other counties could make a, a real uh, a real problem for us. Um, I think it's time that we address the situation, take care of the situation of the county. Uh, and I don't believe in putting Band-Aids on things. I, I believe on the uh, with that being said, I, I believe that a Greenfield site uh, right now is the best thing to put in front of the voters and, and let them decide. I think there'll be some time here for for some settling down or to see which way this is going to go. And uh, I think in the long run, uh, the Greenfield site is the best fix and the best thing to offer to the same county voters. So that's what I would uh, support. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner White. Uh, speaking, um, I guess I'm going to be the abstainer on this issue so far, and the reason being is we need to be realistic people. Um, this is not going to fly a $90 million project. Um, Everyone of you fellow commissioners have lived in this community all your lives almost and uh, and you, you know the climate out there right now and it is going to fail miserably and I'm definitely not in favor of special election spending additional money. I would possibly consider it on the uh, on, on the general ballot. Um, but I really have reservations about moving forward. 
Okay, this is Commissioner Vidrickson, and uh, I, I'm going to fall in line basically with with my other commissioners uh, on a greenfield site. Uh, I, I will tell you that we have invested in excess of $100,000 in this project so far, and for us to abandon it at this time would, would not be just just not in the cards for me because we really have no further investment to go forward uh, f with it with an election particularly if it's not a special election we can let the voters decide whether we want to continue to spend uh, in excess of a million dollars a year to house prisoners out of county now I will tell you something else we now have three of those counties no longer accepting our, our uh, inmates they have stated that if you uh, come and get them as you need them for court dates or release or whatever, they will no longer take them. We have this morning, I think, in uh, 260 people in jail. It's been pretty consistent between 260 and 270. And if we get a few more of those, all of a sudden, we could have as many as 240, 250 people in our 190-bed jail over here. And uh, I, I, that's not what I want to see. I want to let the voters decide, and I think that is the prudent action that we should be taking and uh, to move forward and the voters can decide it would be a sales tax uh, option and uh, I, I think it's a big enough item that uh, for the commissioner to decide uh, is not the thing to be doing. It should be the voters who decide it. Uh, the commissioners will decide which which option and agree and again from uh, top to bottom other than the doing nothing uh, the, the Price is about eight million dollars between uh, the lowest option and the highest option. So that having been said, that is that is where I fall into this. Uh, at this time, I'm uh, is uh, the sheriff on the line? Roger Sparks, or uh, excuse me, Roger Solden, sheriff. Are you on the line? I am. Okay. Would you like to uh, make any further comments? I think probably I understand that this is, our timing is not good, but. Uh, this is not a new issue. It's something that we've been dealing with for 10 years now. We've had more inmates in beds, and I don't know what the future holds for the economy, and I don't know what the future holds for our local citizens, but uh, if tough times are ahead, that jail space is going to be needed. I just, you know, we've been struggling with what we have. To add more inmates to that would be a problem. So I'm hoping that we can move this forward. Uh, but I understand it's going to be a it's be well, uh, again, Commissioner Vidrickson, and, and I do want that uh, that cell to be on the part of the voters, and uh, they can decide. And it's as simple as that. We've pretty well uh, given them the facts. We've had our town hall meetings. We've we've done our due diligence. Uh, we've had our speakers. Uh, we're trying to put everything in order. I think the community, while they not everyone in the community is probably informed on this. We have done our homework and gotten the, the message out there, and we will continue to do it. Keep in mind, if we put this on the general ballot for November, we're still, what, uh, six months away from having to make that final decision. I would ask the clerk, uh, what, at what point in time would we say it's going to be on the ballot or it's not going to be on the ballot? What, what at a time frame do we have to uh, make that decision? Um. This is uh, Jamie Doss, the county clerk. Um, I would recommend we have a definite decision by September 1, no later than that, just so we can get everything prepared for the November ballot. Okay, so then uh, Commissioner Vidrickson again, we are nearly five months away from having to make that final decision uh, from a go-ahead standpoint. And really, uh, if, if, if I'm done my homework correctly, Phil, uh, we do not have any further uh, major further costs involved in pursuing this project. Is that correct? Uh, if, if the commission does decide to go with the general, general election as opposed to a special election, uh, then no, no further major costs other than, you know, to be to, to print them in literature and inform the public and that sort of thing. But it should, should be pretty significant. Okay, Commissioner Vidrickson again, and that, that uh, tells me that we, we don't need to drop this project. We need to let the voters, the citizens decide on what we're, uh, you know, whether we're going to go forward or not, and we've got about 150 days or so before we have to make that decision to even pull the plug on that portion of it. So that's where I stand. At this point, I will open it up for public comment if we have any callers. 
and I would ask it if you call her if you are there that you identify yourself and you have three minutes to make your your plea your comments thank you do we have any comments or any callers okay okay our first caller seems to be Margaret Meyer uh, Margaret if you're on the line uh, you have the floor okay yes this is Margaret Meyer I'm really Lene Meyer Margaret's my first name I want to thank you for the information. I've been wondering where this is sitting, considering the virus thing. I just want to say our, our committee, of course, our community um, conversation committee um, canceled our, our three sessions because of obvious reasons, and so this will help us know uh, how we need to plan ahead. I do want to... Um, just say we need to really look at a big, big picture and take a look at, yes, we need change. If we want less, less people in jail over time, we're going to have to be able to have adequate space and programming to help those people uh, turn around their lives so they won't commit, keep committing crimes. Uh, I just want to say, too, that we got to keep in mind that there are many in our communities that, and many voters that are lucky enough to... Um, not having, not having uh, to have to go to jail because either they had adequate money to pay bail and could stay out until they went to court or they just didn't get caught. So uh, in looking at all that I've, I've learned in terms of cost, in mean, the big, big picture, yes, uh, $90 million for a new place will be a lot of money, uh, but it will cut down on, on the cost over time. So I think we have to, as citizens, voters, balance our logic and our emotion and take a look at a, at a big, big picture. Again, thanks for your efforts and keeping us safe. And um, I'll be in touch with our, um, our group, and we'll take a look at where we want to go now based on what I've learned this morning. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lene. Uh, are there further callers? No one else has raised their hand. We have no further callers. Uh, I appreciate everybody's indulgence in this matter. I, I particularly uh, appreciate uh, uh, the uh, my fellow commissioners who have studied this for over two years now, and we've really had the information before us in the last uh, four or five months. And uh, everybody, uh, I think one of the commissioners even mentioned they're really wrestling with this, and I think we all have. And uh, so thank you for all of your comments. We will move to uh, our non or our informational items at this point uh, the county administrators uh, update mr. chair do we need a motion on that last excuse item me. six excuse me we do I'm, I'm sorry uh, we do need a motion on RFA 154-20 um, this is Commissioner Shadwick, and I have a couple more questions um, what is the cost of a special election and if we did that what would be the time frame of that So a decision, Commissioner Shadwick again, so a decision does need to be made a little bit earlier of whether we're going to do a special election or a November election from what I'm understanding. We that can't make that decision September 1st. That's true. And uh, so that, that date would be what, uh, Jamie? I mean, is that 30 days in advance, 60 days in advance as far as a special election would go? If we have a special election, um, we would need it. Um, a little over 90 days prior because I have to send uh, my uh, special election plan to the Secretary of State's office 90 days prior to an election. So I would need it uh, roughly about 100 days to be able to get that together. So, so we would, uh, Commissioner Vidrickson, we would be looking at somewhere uh, prior to June the 1st to make the decision. Mm -hmm. So if we can put that on our calendar uh, that we would revisit this on which item or which direction we're going to take 
uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of May the 20th or somewhere so, in that. Uh, Uh, Commissioner Vidrickson, I would I would say that right now I would be leaning against a special election uh, simply because of the timing of it. Uh, you know, in 45 days from now, which is when we would have to be making a decision on whether to call it, we don't know uh, whether the, the COVID virus was still going to allow us to, to go out and uh, not have to approve social distancing and so forth. Uh, I think uh, it's prudent of us this time, and the COVID, again, is playing into the uh, situation that, that we put this on the general ballot in, in uh, November, and that will allow us the time to do that. Uh, hopefully, we can have the COVID uh, mostly behind us at that time, and uh, people are going to get out and vote. So that, that would be my feeling. So. This is Commissioner Shadwick, and as I'm replaying this in my mind, my comments earlier, I think I misspoke and said I was for a special election. And if, if I did that, I was wrong. I am, I am for a November election and not spending any extra money on this until it goes to the voters. So I apologize. Uh, does anyone, any other commissioner wish to weigh in on this? This is Commissioner Weiss. Uh, here again, I'm, I'm rather torn. I, I believe that this is a, such a uh, large uh, item, almost a standalone item, uh, that deserves uh, its own election, which will allow us to possibly do a a mail-in ballot um, for for this project and uh, allow all the citizens the opportunity to vote on it, not knowing where the COVID is going to be. Uh, Commissioner Vidrickson, well, certainly a general election is going to allow everybody to, to vote on it. It actually would allow uh, additional time uh, to be registered and so forth. But I appreciate uh, your concern and your comments and, and uh, understand them. Uh, either one of the other commissioners wish to say anything? Nope, I'm fine. We probably need a consensus. So far, it's two to one uh, as far as a, a, a general election or a special election. So uh, I would say we probably need someone else to weigh in. Well, my consensus is, and this is Commissioner's part, uh, would be to go with number two, the Greenfield site, and uh, with the November election. That's, that's where my thought is. Okay. okay. That does give us a consensus of three to one. I don't think we need to vote on that necessarily. So uh, that would be the direction uh, that we would go. The, the uh, feeling as far as your motion would be concerned, uh, Commissioner Shadwick, would be to go for a, uh, a general election dedication uh, on this uh, for the general election. I'm not so sure I'm the right person to make this motion with my hesitancy, but uh, I, Mr. Chairman, I will move that we um, pass RFA 154-20 um, and declare an election for a dedicated sales tax to construct a new jail in the general election in November. Commissioner Sparks, can I second the motion? It has been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 154-20, election for a dedicated sales tax to construct a new jail. Uh, my further comment would be that uh, understanding that we could still pull the plug on this uh, you know, depending on where our, our, our society is at that time, uh, we're, we're not, this is, it's going to happen. We're going to put it on the ballot, but we could still pull it. So that having been said, there's a motion on the floor. Uh, I will make a roll call vote of Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Weiss. Aye. Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Commissioner Shadwick. Aye. And Commissioner Vidrickson is aye. The motion does carry five to zero. Now we'll move on to uh, our informational items. Uh, 
County Administrator's update. Philip Smith Haynes. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Chair, members of the commission. Just a few items today. First, I First, want to take the opportunity, opportunity to recognize, recognize the recipient of the Oliver Had Memorial Scholarship. Our selection, Our selection committee met last Wednesday. Wednesday. We have four applicants. All met the criteria. They are residents of Stone County and uh, they are going into agricultural pursuit. They have good great point averages. Then we had uh, plenty of funds available. The current balance in the farm account is $174,157.65. Two of the current scholarship recipients are seniors. So by, so by recommending four folks, so there will only be a net two new ones. So I'd like, so like to extend congratulations, congratulations to Jean George, who attends Bennington High School, Abigail, Abigail Johnson, who attends Southeast of Colleen High School, Owen Bradley, who attends El Colleen High School, and Trista Stevenson, who attends the Lion of High School. Uh, certificates have been mailed to the board. Uh, secondly, I'd like to briefly mention that, that um, last, last week, week I talked about, about the transfers, end of year transfers, of year transfers to the auditor, to the auditor uh, and I may have misspoke. I wanted to clarify that the Roden Bridge transfer will go to the special highway. And last but not least, the Select Commission will know that I will be on the Fires for the day. So I have, so I have okay, I, uh, Commissioner Vidrickson, uh, my regret in, in the uh, scholarship portion of it is that those students can't be come before us right now because of our, our COVID virus uh, to, to be on TV, to, for us to shake their hands and say congratulations and for them to get that acknowledgement. But we are very happy to be able to uh, approve those scholarships. So thanks and keep up the hard work and I know that your parents uh, really appreciate the fact that you students get good grades and uh, are able to come up with the scholarships. So at this time, uh, I would further go to uh, commissioner comments. Is there any commissioner who wishes to, to speak? Hearing none, are there any announcements uh, from commissioners or anybody? If not, uh, I would take a motion for adjournment. Commissioner Shadwick, so moved. Commissioner Sparks, I take a motion. Uh, it has been moved and seconded that we adjourn today's meeting. Uh, again, we'll take the roll call. Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Weiss. Aye. Commissioner Sparks. Aye. Commissioner Shadwick. Aye. And Commissioner Vidrickson is aye. We're adjourned. Thank you for watching.